All right, guys, welcome to the show. We have an easy pork chop dinner. These are thin sliced pork chops, and we are going to put some Moho Rub Citrus Blend on these. I have not tried this before, but I'm very intrigued because I love Moho, and I've never seen it in like a dry rub format. So uh, we're just going to spread these out nice and evenly and give it just an easy pat, and both sides kind of do the same thing. I didn't go too crazy. I just had some nice coverage because I'm not sure how strong this is. Uh, so just a relatively thin coating, I'd say. Kind of a medium coating. And that's it. We're just going to put them on a, in this case, plastic plate and let them sit aside because we're only going to do this a half an hour before we stick them on the griddle. All right, potato time. We have an American medley, reds, yellows, purples, fast prep, triple wash, no need to peel. I love it. Very convenient. We're just going to slice these up. We'll go a little fast for you. I like that these are baby potatoes. It's just that much faster to cut and prep. All right, so we got them all sliced up, good size, and we're going to give it a little coat of olive oil here. You can do Evo. You can do light. I prefer the light one, but whatever you like. So here we're going to season our potatoes some salt some pepper then after the pepper we're going to go with some garlic powder and this is really to taste uh, garlic powder there is probably about a half a teaspoon some oregano probably about the same half a teaspoon and I'll put the amounts in the description below and then paprika I, I actually put quite a bit of paprika probably a tablespoon just because it's not an overpowering flavor, but it gives it phenomenal color. It does have a great flavor, but I'm more interested in the color. And then, of course, I forgot <laughs> the one medium yellow onion. So no big deal. We adapt, uh, improvise, overcome, and then we add this back in. So the onion's just a rough chop, basically. Uh, real simple chop, chop, chop. And we just add this back in and mix it up and get all those flavors combined with our potatoes and our onions and there you go that's what it looks like and then finally our green beans fresh green beans in a bag from chrome avenue and homestead this is literally 20 minutes from my house <laughs> so good to go sliced almonds and ready for our next step so blackstone heated up we've got the right side of the griddle we're going to cook on again and uh, some oil down some butter and we're going to put our potatoes down so potatoes looking beautiful make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for all future videos all right so our potatoes are down we're going to add our um, green beans as well and we are going to test out this lid to see if we can actually steam some vegetables I'm not sure, so we will find out. So I just kind of get them in place, add some water, just like I normally would, and we are going to cover this lid and give it a, give it about three minutes and check them. Three minutes, I check them, and I can tell you right now, I wasn't too uh, happy with the results, and um, I'm going to tell you right now. We're just going to stop it right here because I tried this for a good 10 minutes to steam these and it just did not happen. So I ended up aborting that mission and going right back to my previous meth method, which was the basting dome. Um, the lid probably works. It does work great for the cheese, like on top of a smash burger, because I already did that. I'm sure it'll, it may work for a pizza. I'm not sure. But as far as steaming veggies, no, it did not work. So I went right back to my basting dome. It works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's the old saying. Uh, so we go back to that. So, all right, we have our veggies are pretty much done as far as the green beans. Potatoes have to play catch up. And we have our sliced almonds down. We're just gonna toast these up. Literally about five minutes on medium heat. And those will get nice and crunchy. And then we're going to throw them right on top of our green beans. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> yes. Give it some crunch, 
some texture to those green beans and good to go so we check our potatoes see there you see the steam coming up I'm telling you I gave it a good 10 minutes it just didn't happen um, it just didn't happen what can I say so this way works that steam keeps the water in the basting dome keeps the water in and then just give it a little uh, little mix make sure that bottom does not get burnt and it needs a few more minutes so we steam it again throw our basting dome down and no problem so we play catch up here and literally it took me about five minutes to catch it up but no big deal so now it's ready we move them over to the left side give ourselves some room for our pork chops and I decided to throw down a little bit of Parmesan cheese some fresh grated Parmesan cheese uh, give it just a little bit more flavor looks good one last steam for the Parmesan melt that on top a little bit and that's it we are ready for our pork chops all right chops have been ready for a while now so we just put them down here you want to have it on medium high to high heat because uh, these are thin chops they are going to cook very fast and you do not want these to dry out so you want the outside color but you don't want them overdone so that's why you kind of want on high heat i did not have it on high heat when i put them down so you see me turn them up right here uh my mistake again adapt so i just turned them up no big deal and you really just want to cook these about a minute on each side maybe two tops because they will cook very quickly i just took off the uh the dome of the potatoes that cheese is melted and after about a minute i'm going to go ahead and flip these they're looking pretty good uh, but I'm not a hundred percent on these so I want to Do something a little different here just to really give them a good kick and that is going to be to add some butter So of course butter <laughs> why not? So I add some butter here around the outside the perimeter in and out of all of these pork chops And then you're thinking well, that's not gonna get on the bottom. Well, of course not. I get it I know I've done this before so <laughs> you add the butter around the outside edges there's a little trick and then you slide them around like that and that gets the butter underneath and that way you don't have to lift up each and one individually and you slide it around it gets the bottom surface touching everywhere and it gives you that nice crispy crust uh, underneath that meat so a little trick little trick for you there so these are just about ready we're going to check them here in a minute uh, let's say there you go there's there's the test with something this thin you got to poke it <laughs> if it's firm it's done so I turn them over you can see the color now with that butter that just infused in there oh yeah now we're talking so these are done we're gonna take them off because you do not want to leave them on once they are done get them off whether you put them on a cooling rack or in this case say my new butcher block that I got uh, just get them off and um, that way they stop cooking because you do not want them to dry out which they will very very quickly so take them off give you a little close-up here of what they look like on the butcher block nice color you can see the juices flowing out of the bottom there they're still nice and juicy looking good all right one last final close-up of the entire dinner look at those green beans with the toasted sliced almonds beautiful the triple medley potatoes with the parmesan cheese and then finally those pork chops look outstanding with that citrus mojo oh my goodness everybody thank you for watching liking subscribing and commenting and we'll keep on cooking big cat out Hey guys, before you head out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out our new merchandise as well as our new ebook, Griddling Favorites. Everybody, stay safe and have a great day.